Hi, everyone. So good to be here today. Um, I'm really excited uh, to share what I've been through. Um, I've been back for like a little over a month, and so I was really praying. Um, so to be honest, I didn't, I didn't prepare too much for today, only because um, I feel like when I prepare, it becomes sort of like, a, like too scripted. Um, and I, my, my heart today was that you guys would, would feel my heart in this. And, and when I do share um, that, that you will actually feel my heart. Because a lot of what I will share will be words don't really do it justice. Um, what God did in, my, in, my, in me and the experience that I had, words don't really... <laughs> Um, they don't do it justice, I guess. And so it was really a heart thing that God did inside of me, and it was really something experiential that I felt. And so I just pray that that's sort of what's communicated to you guys, is that you would even begin to feel that in your own hearts. And so um, I do want to start by saying a huge, huge, huge thank you um, to everybody who, who donated to, to me and to this cause. Um, and if you didn't donate, well, I thank you for your prayers. And if you didn't pray for me, well, I just thank you for being you because y'all are great. Y'all are awesome. But um, I did manage to raise uh, $746.35 for the ministries. And so um, basically within all, I, I, uh, I prayed about it and I felt that 40% of the proceeds that I'll raise will go towards helping me fund my trip, and then 60% will go to the ministries that I worked with. And so 746 bucks will be going to the ministries down in Asia. So that's, that's a huge blessing, because with the, especially with the, the exchange and stuff, they, it, it's, it's, a really, it's a big number for them. So thank you guys so much for that. So today, um, Obviously, I'm going to talk to you guys about my trip. Um, I'm, I will focus a little bit on breaking down um, some misconceptions that sort of revolve around um, short-term missions, because I know that short-term missions is on Pastor Dave's heart, and it's on his heart for, for the church um, as well. And so he asked me to speak a little bit about my own experiences for, for this short-term mission, so I'm going to do a bit of that. Um, and also breaking down some misconceptions on special needs, because the um, orphanage that I did visit in China was a special needs orphanage. And so I'll share a bit about um, the things that God's taught me through that. <clears throat> so basically, the last time I spoke to you guys was in the summer, uh, where I had the opportunity to share a little bit about my journey and what God was doing in my life. And so as uh, most of you know, I um, decided that I wasn't going to do second year at Bethel because I felt that the Lord was telling me not to. Um, instead, I spent three months in California. And it was actually in, in California that sort of jump-started this trip uh, to China. Um, and so I'm, I'm sharing this with you guys only because it, it's, I mean, it is part of the overall journey of, of what God sort of has me in, and even to encourage you guys to dig, dig a little deeper in your own individual lives with God. Um, and so in California, so okay, so the idea of loaves and fishes was coming up like a ton. Um, it was, you know, I was reading about it in, in the Gospels, I was studying it. Um, at Bethel, people are, <laughs> they need multiplication and they need a lot of provision because there's a lot of people who go by faith, a lot of international students who don't have a ton of money, and so it became sort of a, a point of prayer. We're praying loaves and fishes over people, and you know, sort of that same idea. Um, and uh, my boyfriend, who is at school right now, he actually received um, a, like a, a, an envelope with money in it from, from someone, um, just blessing his time at Bethel, and it was signed, Loaves and Fishes. And so here I am looking at this, and I'm like, oh my goodness, it's coming up everywhere. And what I noticed about God, how he speaks to me in my life, he speaks a lot through like details. And so all those like little repetitions of things that come up, I'm always trying to take mental notes because I'm like, okay, God, are you on this? Like what's going on? And so I noticed that loaves and fishes was something that was coming up 
a ton. Um, and so when I was praying about what to do in January, I, I had a, my heart was to go to Africa. I wanted to do a short-term mission in Africa. Um, so I was looking into different ministries, and um, I ended up finding one, um, which was the one in China. And the reason that I knew God literally like pinpointed it was when I was looking into this ministry, um, it was called Loaves and Fishes International. And so as soon as I saw that, I said, all right, God's sending me to China. And so um, that sort of started that. Um, I got in touch with them, found out I could stay three weeks, and then um, I ended up contacting Melissa and Zui, and I figured if I'd be in China, why not see if I can also go to Vietnam, and so I ended up staying with them uh, for three weeks after my trip. And so, um, fast forward to end of January, I went to California for two weeks, which was really awesome, uh, China for three weeks, and then Vietnam for three weeks. Um, Vietnam was a little less missions. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time at Melissa and Zui's house. We ended up visiting uh, a home called Grace House, which is um, individuals, orphans, um, who are a little bit older, but they have physical disabilities. And they were actually making uh, like arts and crafts and stuff. They were like designing uh, jewelry. And so we got to spend time helping them make the jewelry. And, and they, ended up, they ended up selling it and then raising money for their home. So that was cool. Um, and overall, China was much more the, the missions trip that I went for, whereas Vietnam was more like a cultural trip which was really cool. So I really got to experience the culture that is, that is Asia. So that was really awesome. So all together was a nice mix of the best of both worlds kind of thing. Um, so to go a bit more into detail, I'll start with the travel aspect. Now, if any of you uh, are interested in doing short-term missions, and, and they're short-term missions, but I would even say like going out of your comfort zone. And the thing about God is he loves to take us out of our comfort zone. It's how we grow. It's how we learn. It's how we try and seek him to be like, God, what are you doing with me? And, and it's usually in that place of outside of your comfort zone where we're sort of desperate, like, oh my goodness, God, where are you? And so I went to China for the first time. Um, I, I was running super low on sleep. I did not sleep. It's like a 16 hour time difference from California. So just that threw me right off for like four days. Um, and four days was by the grace of God because usually they say a day per hour. So four days was actually really good. Um, culture shock. I mean, not many people spoke English. Um, you know, getting there, my flights, there was problems with my flights, so I was, I was a huge mess. I was like, I don't, I was by myself, and I was like, I don't want to be alone, and I'm just like, it was, it was really hard. It was hard the first um, few days. Even when I got to my final destination, um, I got to meet some of the workers who, there's many Americans actually who work at this orphanage, um, and they were absolutely amazing. But um, my first day in the orphanage, it, it, was, it was very difficult for me. I, most of the staff didn't speak very well English or it was very broken. And you, so the, the orphanage, it's a special needs orphanage. The floor that I was working on was a, um, there was nine, nine children, uh, eight of them with severe cerebral palsy. So they couldn't walk, they couldn't talk, they, 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 they couldn't do much. And so coming in there, it's not like they're running at you to play with you kind of thing, you know? So I kind of showed up in the room and could speak to like three staff, kind of, and all the kids are either sitting or lying down, right? Because that's what they could do. And, and I was so, I was very like, I, very not knowing what to do because I, I, I didn't know how to connect with the kids. I didn't know how to connect with people because everything was just super like unknown and, and, and I couldn't speak the language. And so day one was very, very hard. And I remember that night going into my room and it wasn't the coziest room either. It was kind of just plain Jane. And, and I was like, 
God, why am I here? And it was this, this feeling of like, I felt very lonely. I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. I felt like God wasn't anywhere. And I'm like, why am I in China right now? Like, I don't even, I've never even wanted to really go to China. Why am I here? And I, and it was this, you know, this feeling that, like I was sort of just letting it all out. And so I just prayed and I said, God, you need to help me because I'm here for three weeks. And you called me here, so you better do something. And so um, it took a few days, but once things, once I started establishing relationship, um, I'm, no, I'm not even kidding. It went from like this to like this. And, and I can't even describe like, and it was in a really short period of time, so I was really grateful what God started doing so quickly um, in my life. And so he actually, like, even aside from even things in the orphanage, he was working in my heart like a ton, you know, of learning how to change perspectives in the situations that I'm in, learning how to see things differently, learning how to live in the right now. Like, there's all these things that sort of were, were coming up, and it's all these things that even throughout the week I sort of got to really work on in my own heart. So that was really awesome. Um, so I will actually play the video, and then from there I'll sort of explain to you guys a bit more in depth. So basically this uh, is a guy who came for a week and a half while I was there in my three weeks. Um, and he took videos of, this is sort of the full experience. So there's parts of the video from the room that I was in um, and then throughout the, the whole home to sort of get a bigger picture of it. Can you see? Good.
So that's their little home. Um, it's a home called, it's called Hidden Treasures Home. Um, it started with a, an American couple that felt called, well, that God called to China. And so um, that was 12 years ago. And now they, they are an orphanage. Um, they have almost 60 kids. Uh, 23, I believe, since they started have been adopted. Um, they have also expanded into, uh, they have a school for the children, they have a church, um, they have a, a home for single moms who need the help, they have an elderly home, and they have a, an animal shelter. And so it was really amazing getting the opportunity to just sort of experience the, the whole, the, the, the hidden treasures um, as a whole. Um, and so, so basically, once, once I got there, once I got established, um, once things started getting much better, um, and also side note, so basically what I was saying about traveling, if you do do, even if it's short-term missions, even if, it, again, it's you getting out of your comfort zone, it won't always look super pretty. It won't always be very fun. And you could cry, and it's okay, because I did a lot. <laughs> um, but, you know, again, it's, it's, it's choosing to see things from a different perspective and allowing the Lord to work in your heart. And in my situation where I felt loneliness, where I felt that God wasn't there, it was in that moment where I had to sit and say, okay, I know you're here. I know I'm not alone. Like, let's do this kind of thing. And, and, and I sort of got this routine started where in the morning I'd wake up early and I'd do what really makes me come alive. I would, I would journal. I would spend time with God. I would, you know, I had my book. I had my Bible. And that's sort of, for me, I'm more of a morning person. So I would do that in the morning. But this place that wasn't so cozy, my room, sort of became this this warm sanctuary where I could just wake up and I was excited to wake up and just sort of start my day like that. And so, again, find the things that, um, that work for you. Find the things that really help you connect to God and connect to yourself. And, and, and it's okay to not always feel comfortable, but, but if you want to and if you choose to accept where you're at, God will, God will, God will take you to where you want to go. And, and that's what he did for me. Um, and so... On a whole, what did this trip do for me? Um, the only way I could really describe it is that of what I felt is that I, I, I got a deeper depth, <laughs> as, as weird as it sounds. It's kind of the only way I can to put words to what I felt is that there was this depth that God was digging up sort of inside of me and it just became this this deeper well this deeper well um this deeper well of love this deeper well of joy and and it's hard like i said before it's hard to put into words what god did because it wasn't it's not some it wasn't the hanging out with the kids. It wasn't, hang, you know, building a relationship. All those things were incredible. But God did something. There was a deeper depth that God sort of um, created within me. The home in itself is so full of love. There are, I've heard stories of other orphanages in China, and it's very heartbreaking. It's very sad. Um, special needs is not something that's well understood. Um, and so children are sort of not treated like people. And um, I won't go into that, but it's, you know, to hear those stories and see the love that, that is stirred up daily for each individual child was so life-giving. Um, the staff have to go through a two-day um, uh, training uh, before they start working. Um, one is keep your love on. So you know the Danny Silks, keep your love on. So that's sort of how they learn to love and respect each other. And then they also have to go through the Danny Silks, loving your kids on purpose to, um, to really establish the, what they expect between staff and, and child. And, and you could just see, you see it in the staff, the staff that I was working with. I'm on the hard, I was on the hardest floor. So the oldest girl was 14 years old. Um, and imagine, can't walk, can't talk, can't, can't, 
do anything on your own sort of thing. And so the staff is, is responsible for to take care of all of all these kids. Not once did I see a staff member avoid changing a diaper. If they saw it, they did it. You know, um, not once did I see them always going to the easiest kid to feed because some kids are a little bit messy they a lot of them have trouble swallowing a lot of trouble chewing and so it could get a little messy um sneezing you know it gets a little crazy in there and so not once did did i see like staff always go towards the easiest kid you know it's like okay take food okay i'm gonna go to this one no take it, it like wasn't even a question and it wasn't there wasn't this like oh well i'll you know i'll do this one because it's easier or, or like there was so much respect and love in the room amongst the staff it, i've never been in, in a place like that where as adults like people are respecting each other to that degree and and there was so much love there's so much gentleness with each other it's truly a family and it was they took me in as family and you know we don't speak really the same language not many of them spoke english by the end they were all trying to speak english you know um they would invite me places. They were, they were, they, they, they treated me so much like, like family. And, and I was blown away daily of how they went out of their way to make me feel comfortable and to make me feel like I was, you know, like I was part of them kind of thing. So that was really, that was really impactful in my heart. And <sighs> the kids, oh, the kids were, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, when I started to build relationship with them, um, again, they're all so different. They don't speak. They, they don't do much. But when you can sit one-on-one -on -one and just get to, get to know them, you know, seeing what makes them laugh, seeing what, you know, what kind of things they enjoy, whether it's music, whether it's a book, um, a, a toy or whatever like once you begin to build that relationship it's like you kind of run with it you know there, there's not much you can run with but once you find it you just run with it and being able to spend time with them and just getting to know them was that's where I really felt like this love grow within me that I've never um, experienced before you know even the kids that you there's some you connect with instantly. And there was one, I swear, if I could have taken him home, I would have, in a heartbeat. He, he molded and changed my heart in so many ways, this, this one kid. But, you know, there's, there's a few that, you know, you don't necessarily connect with as well. And, it, you, you know, you see it with everyday people. You know, you don't always connect the best with, with certain people, and it's just sort of the way it is. And that's okay. We love everyone anywhere. Um, but... I noticed that, you know, the few that I had a bit of trouble getting that, that close, loving connection with, it was in moments where I would be sitting with that individual and I would be feeding them and speaking, you know, as you're hanging out and feeding, you know, you're always sort of talking to them and speaking into them and speaking over them and, and you know, it's, it's as I'm feeding that and I'm speaking, you know, to this one girl and I'm like, you're so pretty, like, you're so beautiful, you're such a princess, like, you know, and you know, you're just sort of speaking or, or there's another moment with another one, I was like looking at her in the eyes, like we're sitting sort of on the ground and, and I was looking at her in the eyes and I go, you, you're so amazing, like, I love you so much, I'm just speaking. Because, you know, that's just, you know, it's just what I was doing. I was speaking into her life and I was speaking over her. And I'm not even joking. And it's the first time that this has ever happened to me. I could feel this love. Like that deepness that I felt God was creating inside of me. It's like I could feel love come out of that place. And I'm staring at this girl and I'm speaking over her. And I could feel myself falling in love with her. Like just the person that she is. I could feel my spirit like grab onto her. Like it was the, it was the, cr it was the craziest thing because it wasn't this natural you know, conversation or your, or your, you know, playing it. It was, it was this supernatural feeling that 
that I know God was, was, was so like binding us together at that moment. And I couldn't, and I'm, I literally was staring at her and I start crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I love you so much. And I just felt this overwhelming love. And um, it was, and that's, it was truly, truly supernatural. It was truly something that I knew, like it wasn't just me, like it was God just like, again, pouring out in that moment, you know, as I'm, as I'm ravishing his daughter with love and he just showed up so heavily and I could feel it. I could really feel it tangibly. Um, I've worked, I've worked with special needs kids for four years. And so I've been, I've been very exposed to every, everything, um, every sort of severity from the lightest to the most severe. And, um, I, t I tell people that I work with special needs kids, and um, what I get them, I understand why I get this. So what people often say is, good for you, like, I could never do that myself, you know? And, and it's, it's what I get a lot, and I understand, I understand why people feel that way, and I understand that people maybe feel that they couldn't do it themselves, and I just want, I just want to say it straight, like, Yes, you can. You, you, all, everyone, we are designed to be able to do this line of work. Um, and the reason I, I, I do bring this up and the reason why I want to let everyone know that they have the ability to do this is because we are all created to love. We are, we are love. We are created. God is love. God loves within us. He pours out love. Like the, it, it's, it's, it's love. When you work with a child with special needs, um, the problem that as a, as a society, um, we're stuck. We're stuck with what we see with our physical eyes. We're stuck with what we understand based on what we see. And and the truth is, um, is that if we learn to look past the disabilities, if we learn to look past the lack of mental capacities, we would recognize that these kids are, are kids. They're just kids. They're individuals, they're people who just want to be loved, who want to be accepted, who want to laugh, who want to have a good time, like they're, they're people, you know, and, and, you know, for a long time, I, you know, I questioned God, I was mad for a long time when I said, God, you know, because, because I've been exposed to very severe degrees of um, disabilities, it used to break my heart, and I said, God, how? How and why is this even a thing? Like, how is it that people can be born and, and were fearfully and wonderfully made and perfectly made and beautifully made? How is it that this happens? Like, why does this happen? And I, and I used to be, you know, it used to break my heart because I saw really severe things and I'm like, this is not okay. And in the last year, you know, God really worked on my heart with the fact that there is no answer to that question. Like, I, I, unless there, well, there, yeah, there is an answer. I might never know it here on planet Earth. I might not, with my little mind, be able to understand that. But um, what I've recognized is that I probably may never get an answer as to why. Um, and there might really not be an answer as to why, but I, I decided in that moment of not knowing to just be like, okay, God, I have no idea why, but here we are, and, and, and this is what we're doing. And so what I recognized in that, in that place was that what I started to see, and I noticed it working with special needs, and I felt it, I felt it when I was in China, and it was so firmly like, solidified like so at one point I'm sitting with this little boy his name was Luke Luke is um, he's the most fragile child in this orphanage he he has a lot of trouble breathing his because um, his chest is like indented so his lungs were 
are very, very small, and his stomach is like bloated out, and he's fed almost all day with a feeding tube, and he, you know, he, he gets spazzes where his whole body will just spaz, and then it'll come back, but it'll happen like very, 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 very frequently. Um, but I've never seen a kid more happy. He is laughing all the time. He's smiling all the time. I used to hang out with him because um, he, has to, he has to be sort of by himself because um, he's very fragile, so they have to be really careful with him. And so I would, you know, during the day, I would just go hang out with him. I'd go talk to him, talk to him about my day, what's going on in my life, and, you know, just sort of, just sort of hang out. And I remember one day he was so happy. He was like, he was just laughing, and I don't even know what the heck he was laughing about. He was just laughing, laughing, and, and, and smiling. And I remember I'm sitting next to him, and I could feel this joy. As he's laughing, I'm laughing. As he's smiling, I'm smiling. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I could feel this deep, deep, deep joy well up. And I, even as it was happening, I, I'm literally saying out loud, I don't know what this feeling even means like what is this feeling like it's joy but joy the word joy i feel doesn't do it justice like there's there is this mixture of love and joy and and that to like times a hundred like i didn't know how to explain it as as he's laughing and i'm like my gosh you're like the happiest kid you're like the strongest kid i've ever met and i just sat there and i just again i started to cry because all of these sort of emotions just sort of get the best of me but I remember I was sitting there and I was and I was crying and I'm feeling this love and this joy and I'm I this revelation just dawns on me and I'm like oh my gosh I said you know I'm not the one who's changing the world here. You know, a lot of people think that, you know, working with special needs, like, wow, you're doing something amazing for the world. And I'm like, ah, you know, and then I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, I'm like, Luke, I'm like, you're changing my world. I go, Luke, you are the, you have been created to change the world. You have been put on this earth to make me a better person. And, you know, in the world, I believe, like, in our lifetime, I believe that we are, we're, our purpose is to grow in love. Our purpose is to grow, right? Our purpose is to become like Jesus. That's, that's, sort of, that's sort of why we're here. And as I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, these are the kids, you know, the kids that no one can really explain and people don't really understand. But I'm like, you are the ones that are actually changing the world because you're making me a better person. You're, me, you're teaching me patience. You know, you're, you're teaching me how to, how to give my life for somebody else. And, and, and God directed me to the John 15, 13, where it says, um, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And I'm like, that's, that's, the, that's the greatest love, is to give of yourself to someone else. And these, this is what this cultivates in me. This is, this is what this cultivated in every staff member there. This, the, it's these children that, the only, like, and anyone who has kids would, would understand this, right? You learn how to, li you, you give your life to somebody, like, for somebody else. Like, you know, we've, we've, we've experienced that in situations. And I think that what I learned being with special needs is that these kids will never be able to give back to you ever you know growing up like you, you know we you know my parents give everything for me and now as we grow we you know we help them out and it's sort of that's it's that's the relationship that's that is love but i you know working with them i'm like you'll never you'll never say thank you you'll never know what people have done for you here you'll never know to the extent that people will go to make sure that you're doing good and we do it not because we are forced we do it because it's that's what love is. Love is giving of yourself for the life of another. And, and that's really what Jesus did, you know, and that's sort of the role that we have the opportunity of playing in these people's lives. People that, again, will never give you the recognition for it, but you do it because that's just what pure love is. And it's kids like this that draw out that place of love that you might have never experienced otherwise. And they draw out that place of compassion. And, and, that, and, it, and it expresses the side of God's heart 
that I believe is, is one of the most profound places of his heart that you can never otherwise have known and have experienced. And, and when I realized that, um, again, I was, I was in tears. I was crying and I was like, this is what life is all about. And it's, it's because of kids like you that make me that person. And it's because of kids like you that, that you know, if, if, if everyone is affected in that way, if everyone knows how to draw out that love and compassion, how much different this world would look. And, and, and that's really what, um, what they did for me. And, you know, when, when I allowed that joy and that love to get stirred up in my heart, um, it was so permanent, like it did not go away. And I, you know, and I was actually just rereading part of my journal entries, well, because I journal all the time, um, while I was there, just to sort of go back to that place of what was I feeling daily. And every day it was like, I can't stop crying. Oh my gosh, like I have no words. Like this is amazing. I'm so thankful. And it was every and because I, it, it was such a permanent state of being, of like being there and just loving and just you know, taking from them their joy and their, and the joy that brings life and this love that brings life and just allowing it to transform my own heart. And like, I literally go home every single night and I, I would take my shower and I would go sit and I would sit on my bed and I would just cry. And I go, God, thank you so much. Thank you that you've brought me here. Thank you that you chose me out of anyone that you brought me and that you've allowed me to experience this and you've allowed me to meet these incredible people and you like I was so full of gratitude like I didn't even understand where it was coming from but it was just exploding like I uh, you know, I there was there's no there was no other way of saying it it was just flowing out of me like and again it was just because of what God was doing it's like a natch it's like a again it, it's you know, sometimes in tough situations, we have to choose to, to be grateful and choose to be thankful. And then other times as God starts to move in your heart and in your life, it just becomes such a natural occurrence, such a natural thing where your heart can't do any, it, there was no words. I go, I have no words. I'm just so grateful. Like, I'm so thankful. And, and so God really, really softened my heart for that, you know, and even the things that I was sort of talking about at the beginning where he, in my own personal life where he was, you know, making me aware of certain things and shedding light on certain things. It was, you know, it was all with the, um, it was all to grow, it was all for my growth, but it was, again, I was so thankful. Something came up and I'm like, oh, there we go again, something else I have to work on, you know, but I was like, but thank you, you know, thank you for showing me. Um, so it, it, you know, it, uh, it was really powerful. It was really, really powerful. Um, and I was thinking about it, and I was like, okay, now that I'm home, okay, so let's fast forward to sort of now uh, real quick. So now that I'm home, how, how have I changed, you know? Because I, I, I kept feeling like I'm, I feel so different, like God did so much in my heart. And I'm like, okay, how did I actually change? Um, and so definitely my heart was definitely softened on this trip. My heart was softened for, for people. My heart was softened for the things that are going on in this world. Um, my, my heart was softened for people that are more unlovely, you know, in the, in the physical. Um, but God really gave me such, like, a, such a deeper love um, for, for these people. Um, now and now that I'm home, I know the triggers are, you know, are still kind of there. The things that in my heart are not all gone, um, but I feel like God's gain, given me more of an awareness of, of things and things that I have to work on, and things that um, that in my own heart, like, are you know, it's not everyone else's fault as it was before, but now it's oh, it's actually my fault. I actually have to do something about this. Um, and something that that I did learn, um, so. I wrote here, I learned to practice selfless love in the midst of options. And what that means for me is that when I was in China, you don't say no to things. You know, like if someone says, feed this kid, you're not going to say no. Like, 
you just don't do that. You, you, you say yes, and you, that's what you're there for. You're there to help. You're there to, you know, you're there to serve. So you say yes, and you're happy to do it, but still you say yes. Um, and I noticed being home and being back to my, you know, regular routines and, and, and back to my original comfort zone, um, there's a lot more option to say no, you know, to do things. Like, you could say no a lot. And, and you, sort of, you sort of get away with it, right? Because it's, sort of, it's sort of part of, you know, your everyday where, and you know, whatever. You, there's more options to say no. And, and, I, and I learned that it's in this moment now where I could take learning to say yes selflessly um, in a place where I can only really say yes and bring that to a place where there's a lot of options for no but now choosing to say yes. And so it's very, you know, it's very simple, um, and it's really in the little, in the mundane stuff. You know, your mom asked you to do, well, for me, my mom asked me to do stuff. <laughs> um, and, you know, you just, whereas otherwise you're like, I don't, I don't really feel like it, or you say, yeah, yeah, like, I'm, I'm gonna do that. You know? <laughs> she likes that, she likes that. Um, but again, it was, it was this, and what stuck to me the most was, again, it was selfless love. It was selfless love because the Bible says that that is the greatest love. And that's the love that, they've, that these kids have taught me. That's the love that this staff have taught me. This is the love that this home, that Jesus is constantly trying to teach us within reasonable boundaries. Let's all understand that. But um, it, it's, again, this idea of, of, of selfless love. And so... Um, you know, overall, I look back at my trip, and even to this day, I'm like, I don't even know what to say. Like, every time I, people ask me about it, I'm like, I don't know, it was just amazing. And, and, and again, because it was something that was so much deeper than you could even put words to, it was so much deeper than, than anything that sort of happened on the surface. Um, and so, I do pray for all of you to to be able to experience opportunities. It might not be a, a mission trip. It might not be one, you know, one weekend, or it might just, you know, it might be with a person. It might be over a period of time, but just that you would learn to see God and that you would choose. And I do believe that it's, it's a choice, right? Like they say, love is a choice. Like it's, it's a choice. You choose to say yes to things. You choose to love selflessly. You choose um, to look at something from a different perspective. You choose to say, okay, it may be not, it's maybe not that person's fault, maybe it's my fault. Even if it's kind of that person's fault, it could still be your fault. <laughs> like, you know, you have to choose to actually say, okay, this is where I'm gonna grow. Okay, this is where I wanna learn. Okay, I'm not gonna let you come into my inner world and mess it up. I'm, I'm in charge of me, so I'm gonna choose to take control of me and then grow. And so I just, I do, I pray, I pray, I pray over all of you here that you would allow God to work in your heart and, and that he would teach you the, the benefits of just of living from that place of choosing love above other things, of choosing to say yes in the midst of a kind of a tough situation and saying, yes, okay, God, this is where I'm going with this. And, and just partner with him in those moments. And, and I promise you, like, th like, he just, he can't, he won't, he never does let you down. And, you know, in this, you know, I met a few people there as well that, um, that did short-term missions. Now they're doing actually two years, so they're doing long-term, and who had sort of the same experience where it was really, really tough at the beginning, but then sort of, you know, again, God called them into the, their unique place and, and just started to work on their heart, and just what came out of it was so fruitful. It was so beautiful, and so I, I feel it. I feel it in my own heart. I feel it like to a point where after a month, I'm still like, oh, I'm still crying about it because it touched me on such a deep level. And so I do pray that today you guys actually really did feel, you know, more, more with your, your hearts and your spirit rather than even the words that I tried to put, um, you know, that I tried to, to put on that. But I just pray that, that you did feel that. And I pray that God just, just 
just as he's working in your life, you just say yes, and that you would just, you would have these testimonies. And this testimony is all of y'all's testimony too, so take it, take it and run with it, because on, it's so life-changing, guys, it's so life-changing, and so I'm very, um, I did, you know, there's a few things that I did feel God had me um, share with you, so I do, I do pray that it blessed you a lot, and so uh, I love you guys. Push the red button and show us on the map. I want Taylor to show us on the map where she actually went. Can you kind of point with the red button? Oh, there, point oh my God, I can't even see it. Somewhere. Right, oh, yeah, Fuja, right there. Right there. Right there. Right. Okay. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so Actually, it's the cleanest air there. I know China is not known to have really clean air. But there in Fuzhou, it's like they say it's the cleanest air. It's so beautiful. So, tell, so beautiful. Tell us quickly also, where do the children come from? Um, some come from other, uh, other orphanages, um, some are found, so actually the way that this was, the way that all of this started, Mike and Dina who are, so if, so if you guys ever heard of Father of Lights, the documentary by Darren Wilson, they are featured in that video, that's where I heard about them originally, it talks a bit, of, a really bit about their journey from America to China, and actually their orphanage started because a little boy, who was very premature, was left in the mountains um, by his parents, I guess, and um, to be basically eaten by, and that, and you know, and it's sad, but that's like, that's a, that happens there, you know? It's like you can either leave them in the city where someone can find them, but you have more chances of getting caught, or you can, bring them into the mountains and 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 you're you're kind of you're safer to do that and sort of just let your kid get eaten by animals and it's sort of, that's just it's like a known thing that kind of stuff happens and a little boy was found um and Mike and Dina had already contacted some orphanages and that's why their name was sort of known because they wanted this they wanted the sickly ones they wanted the ones who were dying and people in China were like why like why are you here from America and now you want sick dying kids like that doesn't make sense and um, but that's what God called them to and of course they didn't say that because that would have been really dangerous and maybe foolish they said no we just want to help and Anyway, so their name got known now around, around town a little bit, and three women found this little boy, this little premature boy. He wasn't able to eat. They tried to feed him. He wouldn't eat. They called an orphanage. They gave Mike and Dina's name, said, go, go to them. And so they brought this little boy to Mike and Dina, and Mike and Dina said, okay, like, we'll take him. And, and it was a long, 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 long road to, to a recovery. Um, but they, they had, like, he, so they still have him to this day. So he's, he's 12 years old. He is mentally uh, disabled, but he's, he's healthy. Um, he's doing well. You know, they, they had another little girl that they got from an orphanage who, she was the second one, another preemie. She ended up passing away. Like, they went through such hardships, such victories, but such hardships. But God just kept, you know, nudging on their heart to press in and press in and believe that what he has is bigger. And, and so it kind of started like that, um, where they would actually have to go to different orphanages and, and ask, they would ask for the sicker ones. They would ask for the ones that are not doing well or the ones that are more severely disabled. And then, because they knew that they wouldn't get the proper care. And now they're, they're known, you know, they have great relationship with um, the people of the city, even with the government, which they really had a hard time with the government at some points, because, the communism and stuff like that, but um, they end up growing in relationship with them, and now people actually bring kids to them. If if some orphanages are, if they have too many kids, they'll you know they'll try and get them to to Mike and Dina and stuff like that. Okay. Um, put your hand on your heart, and uh, Kayla is going to pray to for God to enlarge the capacity of our hearts to show love, because we all have love within our hearts. We need to be able to show it, right? Yeah. So just pray something along that way, okay, for us? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh, God, thank you so much. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, God, that you have given us this ability to love, to love, to not stop at... Um, at what we see with our eyes, but to look deeper within. We, you've, 
you've made it possible in, in for us to look at the soul, to look at the spirit, to look at the person that you created in front of us, God, and, and not see them by their limitations, but actually see what they have to offer us, actually see what they get to teach us. And so God, I just pray right now that hearts are open, that hearts are softened, God, that um, hindrances to love would just be washed away by love. God, that it would be so softened that, that any, any sort of hindrance to love would just be washed away by your great love, God. The love that, that, that we, we essentially come from, that we are, that we have to offer, and that we would not allow anything to stop that love from from going forth god that we we see that the people in front of us hold the key to our freedom jesus as we choose to love them and 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 i pray that you would enlarge our capacity to love people even more because it's already there it's already there you don't you don't even have to we are it's already there god i pray that we become more aware that we already have that we already have it. We already have the capacity, God. I pray that you teach us how to use it. And I pray that you teach us how that you would guide it, Jesus, that you would give us the tools to understand it and, 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 and to run with that. And God, I also pray in, with, with that, that you would enlarge our capacity to receive it, Jesus, that it all starts there. It all starts within us, Jesus, and then it flows out so naturally. And so I just pray that we already have it all from you, God, that there is, it's an infinite amount of love that you ravish on us every single day. And, and that I just, I pray that we, we enlarge our capacity to, to receive it. And, and giving it out is really not too hard after that. And so, God, I thank you so much. You're so good to us. And I just bless everybody here on their unique journey um, towards you, God, and, and to just go deeper with you, Jesus. And so, yeah, thank you, God. You're awesome. Amen.